Israeli military when it comes to their own kidnapped troops. Since last year's deal, which saw one Israeli soldier exchanged for more than a thousand Palestinian prisoners, the military has put in place a new protocol. And as Artis Paul Asleer explains, it calls for soldiers to kill themselves rather than be taken captive. It's that time of year again when Noam's caught up to put his life on the line for his country. When you go to fight, you understand that you might, you might not come back. And six Israeli soldiers never did come back. Another 19 were returned in prisoner exchange deals. The fact is that kidnapped soldiers present a huge problem on a strategic level for, for our country. Which is why in the 1980s, the Israeli army introduced its Hannibal Protocol. It says IDF soldiers must prevent the kidnapping of a fellow soldier, even if it sees him killed. No soldier in Battalion 51 will be kidnapped at any price, at any price, under any condition, even if it means that he blows himself with his own grenade together with those trying to capture him. It's easier to deal with a dead soldier than a kidnapped soldier. And that message was loud and clear last year when Israel set free more than a thousand Palestinian prisoners in exchange for one captured Israeli soldier. And that price, say one in five Israelis, is simply too high. But will it force commanders to get strict and insist their soldiers kill a comrade rather than have him captured? No soldier is going to shoot at his comrade. It's the instincts. It's the comradeship is the strongest emotion familiar to us. But this fighter's not so sure. He knows the power his uniform has to hold his country to ransom. I would like him to shoot. I would like him to shoot to try to, 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 uh, to avoid me being kidnapped, to, to, to stop the kidnapping at any cost. Even at the risk of being killed by friendly fire, the ultimate price for a soldier to pay. Paul Asliya, RT, Tel Aviv.